All right, guys. So my name is Sarah. I am a speech pathologist in the state of Texas. And if you are from Texas, you probably know something about the Blue Bonnet books. Um, the Blue Bonnet books are books selected by four different panelists across the state. Um, they could be librarians, teachers. Um, they're just in the education system. And these books are chosen um, to be up for the Blue Bonnet Award, which the Blue Bonnet Award um, is awarded and chosen by students. So there are 20 books selected that are up for the award and um, the, the kiddos select out of those. So <clears throat> my kids in speech therapy, we've talked about the Blue Bonnet books. We've read like little summaries over them and many of them have said, I do not have time to read those or you sound better reading them or d there's all, all kinds of excuses. So I told my kids that I would read them and record them. So essentially like a live audio book. <laughs> but um, so we are going to start with one today. We're going to start with Billy Miller Makes a Wish. And um, so this book is actually part of a series, but the books stand alone. Um, so here's our first one. Billy Miller makes a wish. Chapter one. When Billy Miller blew out the eight candles on his birthday cake, he made a wish. He wished that something exciting would happen. Not more than 10 minutes later, even before the present opening had begun, a police car and ambulance flew past Billy's house and raced down the block. The whale of siren stopped nearby. Without thinking, Billy ran out the door and turned in the direction of the flashing red lights and followed after them. Wait up, his father called. Along the block, bats swooped from the trees and fireflies pulsed in a slow motion, but Billy didn't notice. He just ran. Neither a police car nor an ambulance had ever come to Maxwell Street before, at least not that Billy knew of. The police car and the ambulance had parked in front of Mr. Tooley's house at the far corner. Billy stood, still as glass, at the edge of Mr. Tooley's driveway. His father caught up to him and firmly placed his hands on Billy's shoulders. What's happening? Billy whispered into the green darkness. I don't know, said Papa. I don't, I don't know. Billy was mesmerized. He watched Mr. Tooley's house intently. It dawned on him that the paramedic, when he, <clears throat> it dawned on him that being a paramedic when he grew up might be a good idea. It would be better than being a regular doctor because you'd still get to help people, but you'd also be able to drive fast and do sirens. Neighbors were gathered in the sidewalk and driveway in clusters. Papa slipped away and talked to a couple people, but then came back to Billy. After lingering for a few more minutes, Papa said, I think that we should go home. Mom and Sal are waiting and we still have birthday business to attend to and I still have some packing to do. Papa? I mean, Dad? said Billy. Do you think Mr. Tooley's okay? I hope so. Lately, Billy had been trying to call his father dad rather than papa, which is what he t he'd called him for as long as he could remember. It was a hard habit to break. And even when Billy remembered to call him dad, he still thought of him as papa. Maybe he always would. He was having the same problem calling mama mom. In that silence that followed, the stars seemed to draw closer, as if t they, too, wanted to know what was going on. Let's go, said Papa. He directed Billy toward home and gave him a gentle shove. They walked quietly across Mr. Tooley's perfect lawn. It was strange. It was as if the excitement Billy had felt about his birthday had been shut off inside of him, and a different excitement because of the police car and ambulance had been stirred up and had taken over. There was another feeling that was jumbled with it, becoming stronger. It was a certain uneasiness because Papa was going on a trip tomorrow. He was going to an art camp for adults, and he'd be gone for four nights. Billy wished that he could go with Papa. Billy turned back for one last look at Mr. Tooley's house. The paramedics were taking a stretcher out the front door. There definitely was someone on the stretcher. Is this happening because of my wish? Billy wondered. Papa saw the stretcher too, but he kept guiding Billy forward. Homeward bound, he said in a jolly voice. I could use another piece of cake. They continued home. Now Billy noticed the fireflies. How could he not? They were flickering like Christmas lights. Blink, blink, blink. 
blinking as if to say, why, why, why? Why did I make that wish? Thought Billy. And that's chapter one.